Okay, in the last video, I showed you a cool technique of how to uh, turn text, and what we had was Amazon, or sorry, Twitter data with a bunch of tweets about a particular product, and we processed the text, got rid of stop words, lemmatized, uh, mark sentences, cleaned it up basically. Then we did what was called hash it into features or variables, where we said, okay, let's um, take this text and turn it into individual words and pairs of words, which is what the n-gram means. Then we use the, our good old filter-based feature selection tool we've used in a prior video to say, look at those uh, 1,024 words or phrases that it came up with and pick the 20 that have the highest correlation uh, or some other method, um, Fisher score is often used, or some other method of uh, uh, seeing how related those words were to some dependent variable, which we, uh, whoops, I should have changed that, which in our case was retweet count. Then we uh, use those 20 variables to then predict the number of retweets each tweet would get based on those words used in the text. So I'm going to show you a, a way to do the same thing, but a little bit better. So what I want you to do is delete feature hashing. If you've been following along from prior videos, delete filter-based feature selection. If you're new um, to this video, just starting with us, uh, feel free to pause the video and pull in all these other pills. Twitter data is available on a previous uh, video, so just go to the playlist, Azure Machine Learning playlist, and you'll be able to find that data a few videos back. And anyway, if you're with me, let's go ahead and grab now from Text Analytics, Extract Ngram Features. So pull your clean missing data into here, and we're going to pull this directly into Split Data and click on Extract Ngram Features. So here's what I like about this. It does basically the same thing we were doing before, where we want to tell it, uh, first of all, which column has the text that we want to uh, turn into features or variables or hash, and that's our pre-processed text column. And then it's automatically built in, let me show you down here, the filter-based feature selection tool. And it says, what do you want to use? Fisher score, that's a good one for text, great. And it says, which column is your dependent variable? Well, that would be, once again, retweet count. As it's taking its time, there we go. Retweet count. Pull that in. Uh, let me show you some of these other things, though. Ngram size, you should be familiar with that. Um, we're going to leave it at two. Vocabulary mode. Now, there's a second input here. I can pull in my own vocabulary. Um, and create a new vocabulary from those tweets, merge it with an existing one. Um, in this case, I don't have an existing vocabulary that I'm going to pull into here. So I'm just going to say create a new one based on processing or hashing this pre-processed text field. And grab a size you should be familiar with. We're going to leave this one at two. We're going to look at all single words and pairs of words. You're welcome. Bump it up to three if you want. I don't really care. Um, for short text, I think two is about right, but that's just a matter of opinion and experience. No science to that. Basically, it's just with whichever one's going to give you the best prediction in the end is the right one. Case skip size. This one's useful. So, do I want to uh, do I want to skip um, hashing something that doesn't have at least we can say two words in it or two features in it? Uh, that's probably well. I don't know. The question is theoretically is are there tweets that could have only one feature meaning after you take out the email addresses hashtags or anything else that you've cleaned in your in your pre-processed text pill how many features are left um so i'm going to go with one and say anything with one or less go ahead and skip or i could be wrong you know what no never mind i'm gonna change it to zero so we're going to keep everything but that's just something you would learn with experience and examining the text after it's been processed and seeing for yourself. Here's uh, another difference I like a lot, weighting function. Before, we just had a binary weight, meaning that extract um, or the feature hashing just produced a zero or one. That was a score given to every uh, um, tweet as to whether or not it included each of those 1,024 features it came up with. Well, there's actually a better way to do that. So TF-IDF, let me show you the details between what both of those are. I'm going to pause the video and pull that page. All right, here we go. Let's scroll down, get to weighting function. There'll be some more details on that here below. Right, where are you? Here we go. 
All right, so binary weights, what we did before, TF, times a term frequency score. So if there's a, a word or a pair of words that occurs more than once in a tweet, give it a two if it appears twice, or a three if it appears three times. That makes sense, all right, if there's a really important word, maybe it matters if it appears more than once, maybe it doesn't, but at least it'll give it a shot and see if you use the TF score. IDF weight assigns an inverse frequency score, meaning there's some words that um, appear less often, for example, but are really important. So uh, if something includes this word, it should get a bigger score if it has one of those rare words that are super important. Other words might be important, but they appear lots of times. And so truthfully, you shouldn't get a whole lot of weight for using that word because even though it's important and it does predict uh, the tweets or the retweets, everybody uses it. So it doesn't differentiate your tweet very well from other people's tweets. So what they've got here is the log, I'm guessing that's the natural log of the total number of words. Corpus means the, the entire possible body of text that these words can come from, which would be the unique single words and bigrams from all the tweets in our data set divided by the total number of times each word or pairs of words shows up. So uh, that's a great way to weight the importance of a word showing up. And then this one, TF-IDF, assigns a term frequency inverse document score to, so it basically includes both the frequency uh, of it within the tweet, as well as the overall corpus of the text, comes up with a score that includes both of them together. I like that one a lot. So this last one, graph weight, I had to do a little bit of research. I'm still learning myself the area of text analytics. I'm a bit of a newbie. So I looked this up, um, text rank, bringing order into text. This is a paper that's been around for a while. Um, by the way, if you're ever looking for what the academic community has to say on these topics and where they came up with originally, come here to this website, Google Scholar. It's fantastic. You can come here and find any academic text. Here uh, is where this paper was originally presented and this was concept was presented. You can see it's been cited almost 2,000 times, which means there's a lot of interest in it. It's um, uh, well established. Anyway, I pulled up the PDF right here. It's pretty interesting. Basically, it looks like they have a good way. Let me zoom in on this. Zoom. A good way of looking at not just individual words and pairs of words and how often they show up versus how often they don't show up, that type of thing, like the, um, the other measures. But they look at the co-relationship or the co-appearance of words together. So uh, this is uh, looking at a bunch of abstracts from research papers and the word linear often appearing with systems, constraints, equations, and then those words have a certain graphical distance between them and other words. So it, it definitely a lot more good theory into how this measure is created than some of those other ones. So let's do this. Let's try out both and see which one gives us the better R squared. That's what we're really interested in. So for now, I'm going to leave this one at, where was that? I'm going to leave it on TF-IDF, and let's come back and change in a minute. Everything else, just the same as previously. Oh, um, I, I'm going to change that if I, I forgot to put this in. One, two, three, four, five. I had to redo these pills earlier, so I lost those from my last video. Anyway, train model, we're predicting retweet count. Still using uh, Poisson regression because we're predicting counts. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and run, select it, and see what we get, and I'll pause it. All right, cool. Let's take a look here. Oh, 0.48. So first of all, way better than the 27% we were getting with the feature hashing and the filter-based feature selection method. But that's really pretty good. Let's remember, so 48.8%. Um, let's change this one now. So we kept zero skip size, two grams. Um, let's see. Oh, by the way, it had to have a minimum of three words, max of 25. Great. I left the rest of that stuff just to the defaults. Let's go ahead and change this now to graph weight and let's see what we get. Pause this. All right, let's see how that ended up. Oh, actually a little bit less, 48.7 rounded up. I'm sure there's going to be different type of texts that are better or worse for each of these measures. From what I understand, if I read the paper right, I think this is better for sentences. And with our tweets, we have so few words. I think it might be a little, uh, not quite enough text to make this more advanced technique worthwhile. So um, that's something you can explore on your own, but perhaps 
uh, that graph weight is better with longer text. Anyway, this is the extract ngram features. As you can see, very useful. It saved us a couple of steps. Oh, I forgot. There's something I wanted to show you before. Right here on split data. Let's take a look at the data that's coming into this. Now, gender is reshare, retreat counter, dependent variable, cloud sentiment. This is the stuff that were independent variables that we've pulled through right from the beginning. But what I wanted you to see was this pre processed text. Why is this still in there? Do we need it? So, a lot of my students this last semester, I realized I didn't do a good job explaining this because they didn't understand. We no longer want pre, -pre, -pre processed text as an independent variable. All that we just did with, uh, oh, look at this. All it did was pull in one column. So let's take a look at this again. I think we might need to spend a bit more time. So extract ngram features. Oh, here's my problem. Number of desired features. I never changed this. Last time we had 20. Let's up that to 20. And I want to show you what happens here. So uh, actually, that makes sense why our graph weight. Let's try both graph and IDF weight again real quick. Unselect it. Let me pause it. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. Oh, about the same as before. Let's see here. What I want to look at is on train model. Let's see what the top 20 are that it's coming up with. So here's our, again, that's our, um, what do you call it? <laughs> our intercept. And then whether or not it's reshared is the biggest factor. And then look at what it's got next. Pre-processed text. Here's why our R squared is the same. It says pre-processed text with this text is the next biggest factor. Pre-processed text with this text is the next biggest factor. This is a problem. What's happening here is that it's looking, because it's, it's using that original pre-processed text as a variable. Well, the data in here is categorical, right? It's text. And so it's treating this as a categorical variable with 800, uh, 8,401 possible values because every tweet is unique. Well, we don't want this original pre-processed text anymore. Instead, we have the whole idea of using extract engrams and feature hashing is to turn that text into simpler variables that can be represented with zero and one values. These are all zeros, but eventually you'll see some ones in there for the text that have those words in them. Anyway, so once we've hashed that original corpus into all of these 20 features, we want to get rid of this pre-processed text variable again. So what we need to do right here, come on, move, is let's stick a uh, select columns again just before split data to get rid of it. So I'm going to copy this one, paste, move it right down here, pull extract n-grams into that, move that into split data. There we go. I'm going to tell this, get rid of pre-processed text. Um, uh, let's see, I don't, want, I don't want to tell it, don't just include these. What I want to do instead is tell it to exclude, begin with all columns, and exclude pre-processed text. And that means it's going to include everything left. So no matter which 20 uh, features it comes up with each time. I want it to uh, get rid of that n-gram string. A number of unique n-grams that could be useful. I'm going to get rid of it for now, but I'm going to get rid of those and the pre-processed text. Check the box. All right, so now let's take a look. I forgot to go through this with you last time. Let me show you the results of extract n-grams. Let's visualize here. So what it did is it said, all right, we had um, oh, the original 12,000 rows the top 20 columns we found are these right here. We label them with preprocessed text dot and AW service term. That's one of the phrases that got a lot of retweets. Cloud computing, host text. And here's the 20 pieces of text that seem to get the most retweets. Does that mean there's something special about this individual text? Honestly, we don't know. We're not sure. So that's why we say always give us whatever the top 20 terms are. And every time we retrain this model, it could be a different 20 each time. So that's why then we want the select columns right here to say, let's start by, let's start with all columns and then exclude the ones we know we're not going to want. 
and then it'll automatically pick up a different 20 pre-processed text uh, features right here each time, depending on which ones were the most important in the last data collection. All right, so now let's keep track of, uh, let's see, we're keeping the top 20. We're using the graph weight. Now that we've done that, let's get our R squared and let's compare graph weight to the uh, IDF TF combination. I'll pause it. All right, let's take a look here. Evaluation results, visualize. All right, this is better. Um, that other R squared was heavily overfit by including that pre-processed text column. And truthfully, in the previous video, we might have kept it in there too. So I'm gonna trust this R squared a whole lot better, 11%. That's still a really good number. And I'm happy with that one. So let's remember 11.3%. Let's now compare that by changing our weighting function from graph weight to TFIDF. So it was 11.3, let's remember that. And let's see if it gets any better. All right, let's take a look. 11.3, and actually before it was 11.31, I think. So it's really, really close, but the actual, actually the graph weight did do slightly better in this case. So uh, interesting. Um, but this is extract n-grams, very useful, um, great way to create a predictive model that will also update on the fly using machine learning. Um, oh, one last thing I meant to show you before, the results vocabulary. This is interesting. So here's a list of the words that it, that it uh, tested, the final 20, and their, uh, their IDF, DF score. Um, and the other one, I guess it'll give us a graph weight score. So this is mildly useful. I guess we can sort of infer this anyway, because these are the words that showed up in our list. When we looked at, pulled up our select columns data set, you can see these right here across the top. It's the same words. Don't know why the word slightly is important, but whatever, it's important. Okay, uh, that's it for this video. We'll move on and do LDA in the next one.